Hi, and welcome to another Bow Beats video. In today's video, we're checking out the Mod Mix. It's a four channel analog mixer from Fine Gear, and you might remember that Fine Gear made the Dirt Magnet as well as the Dust Collector. And just by looking at the names of their previous products, you can sort of figure out where Fine Gear is going with the Mod Mix. And the way to think about the mod mix is not as your typical studio or stage mixer. Instead, you should think about it more like a DJ mixer, but for electronic musicians. So a DJ mixer is not just about setting levels, EQing, it's about performance. A DJ mixer is like an instrument in its own right, and the mod mix is that, but for electronic musicians that want to go a bit more experimental. I should also mention that just like those DJ mixers, the mod mix is quite expensive. Oh, and you can also connect two together, so if you have a lot of money and you want an even bigger mixer, that's a possibility. And while the mod mix can do all of the traditional stuff that a mixer can, you can set levels, you can send to effects, you can EQ and all of that, but at the heart of things, the mod mix is more about no input mixing, using the feedback mechanisms to create interesting distorted soundscapes and about the modulation capabilities that it has. And I think that a good way to summarize my experience with the mod mix is that instead of giving you control over your sound, it invites you to let go of control in favor of beautiful, distorted madness. First up, I want to show you some of the different flavors of sounds that you can create with the mod mix. most interesting features is the ability to feed channels back into themselves, creating interesting feedback loops. Or you could skip the sound source and just use the mixer as the instrument. You won't believe me when I say this, but you can also use the mod mix as a regular mixer. But knowing my synth nerdy audience, you're more likely to use it to create big drone sounds. In today's video I'm gonna go over what the mod mix is, all of its features, and we're gonna do a deep dive into its feedback mechanisms because those are really cool, and we're also gonna take a look at no input mixing. It's not for everyone, but I think that if you love synth sounds, at least it will be a fun experience just listening to what a mixer can produce in terms of sound without using any external sound sources. And a big thank you to Fine Gear who sent over the mod mix so I could make this here video for you all, and to DistroKid for sponsoring today's video. So if you make music of any kind, experimental or not, 
DistroKid is a great way to get your music onto online stores and streaming services. It's very affordable at about $22 a year and you can upload unlimited amounts of music. And the subscription-based model is something I think is particularly helpful if you're just starting making music and want to release it because then you don't have to sit there and worry about the cost of each individual upload. Instead, you can just release everything that you want. And when you're starting out, it's really important to just try and get your music out there and see how it resonates with people. And if you're new to releasing your music, don't worry, DistroKid is super simple to use. It's also quite fast to get your music onto the online stores. So if you want to go and check out DistroKid, use my link in the description. If you sign up using it, you not only get a discount, but you also support the Bow Beats channel. So thank you so much. So I have the OP1 field connected here. I don't think it's the best companion for this mixer, but I'm gonna play you a little bit. So first we're setting the gain about the same for both channels. We have a little bit running and we have four channels over here. Here's the level for the channels. We can also select whether or not we want them to run to the master or the phones. There is an option, I think, of opening up the device and changing it so it sends to both the master and the headphones output at the same time. Uh, I'm not sure if you can do this yourself or if you have to ask um, Fine Gear before you buy it to have that modded, but it's an option, I think. It's in the manual at least. And then we have the three band EQ here, high, mid, low low and it actually sounds pretty good so let's have a listen the EQ can add or remove 10 dBs and in my testing it sounds transparent has a nice sound to it and it doesn't exaggerate the sound it just boosts it in a nice way next up we have the aux sense here four of them and then we have the panning so i'm using two channels here set to stereo panning next up we have the lfos so we have two outputs here and i do believe that the second one is an inverted version of the first one we have an input we have a mount so it's bipolar going positive and negative and then we have the two envelope followers with outputs and a mount set here. LFOs here have speed, symmetry, waveform select, and sync. So sync works with the MIDI that you can sync over USB. So there's no DIN MIDI ports. I do think that this is a missed opportunity. A mixer like this interfaces really well with hardware gear of all kinds, and so DIN MIDI ports would have been great to have on it. Now the envelope followers have inputs here on the back, so you can insert something, say music or a kick drum or something here to trigger the envelope followers. And they are normalized. So channel number one here sends to or triggers envelope follower uh, number one here and channel two, number two. And here we can set attack, decay, sensitivity, low pass and high pass for the envelope follower. And you could then use that and patch that, for example out here into say the level of channel number two for example now in terms of patch points we have these four here which are the level of the aux sends so you can have an lfo for example increase or decrease the auxiliary sends here the level of them and then we have volume and panning and then we come over here to the sends so we have send level here and also the return so you're sending out on four mono outputs, I believe, on the back, and then you have four stereo returns. And these stereo returns could also be used as stereo inputs because you do have level for them over here. So if you, for example, have two effects, you could have an additional four channels here or two stereo channels. And then we have these four switches here, and they are important. They turn on the feedback. So basically the send feeds back into its own channel. So here it's send one feeds back into channel one, send two feeds back into channel two and so on. And this lets you do no input mixing. And here I'm combining no input mixing. So the mixer is generating the synth sound, but I'm feeding the piano into that synth sound for an interesting effect. level over here be careful you don't have to turn up a lot it has a lot of gain 
and then we have phantom power on or off for the four inputs and then we have the master level oh and one last thing we have this channel mix knob here this basically sets the level um, of these four tracks going into the master output and it's just a way to kind of control the, the level especially if we're doing no input mixing because it tends to get really hot now something that i like with analog mixers is the ability to push the signal so it distorts but in a musical and beautiful way so let me just show you here so we have my little beat here as you can see we're not clipping i'm also not clipping on the actual recording of this but let's push the gain so we're clipping you can see here on the vu meters we're clipping and we can push the lows quite a bit distorting but in a quite beautiful musical kind of way and if we take a quick look on the back of the unit we have power on and off we have the power here usb not the prettiest solution we have the input for the envelope followers we have the four input channels with inserts for each channel and you can also run microphones into it with phantom power we have the master output here left right or using these ones here phones output and then we have the four sends here so four mono outputs here as well as four stereo returns that could also be used as additional inputs if you need them and something that i am missing is a din midi port for midi syncing because usb midi sync it's nice when using with a computer but this mixer i suppose it will be used mostly in a hardware setup so that's something for uh, rev 2 of this mixer so here's a quick setup example i have the syntax running in here stereo here panned out left and right and then I have drum brute impact running in on channel number one because that will trigger the first envelope generator, which I have taken the output here, split it into the level here for the syntact. And then I have a two effect sense going into a chorus and a reverb. So here's the bit. If I turn up the sensitivity here, the envelope follower here would decrease the level of the syntact. the send here to the chorus which is also being controlled by two LFOs and we can add some reverb and now if we want to we can just go listen to the reverb sound, turn on the feedback to get this kind of gnarly sound. Gotta be careful, it can get pretty hot. So, just a little quick example here. Next up, let's take a look at something that I think is truly beautiful. And that is the feedback mechanisms of this mixer. So, let me give you a little taste. So let me go back and just explain what's going on here. So I'm gonna turn down all the sense that are going on here. And we can start by just listening here to, um, to the piano. This is what it sounds like. And by turning up the sense here, we can introduce the reverb. But it doesn't sound as huge as it did before, so let's fix that. So by flicking this switch here, we 
feeding the signal back into itself. And now what I want to do is I'm going to turn off the sense here. The feedback is on here. And we're going to send this channel here into AUX1. As you can see, we're getting a signal here. Because AUX1 is feeding back into that channel. And then turning up this one here. Now, what we can do is we can send these two channels into the reverb as well. And it can go crazy like that. It can like destroy your effects and stuff. So be careful, be careful. Just want to do a bit because I also have LFOs up here connected that are controlling the send for four. So the fourth auxiliary here. So you can see, it. oh, it's coming in. It's coming in full force. I got to be careful. Yeah, okay, so that's a nice level. It's coming in at a nice level. And we can bring in the piano again, so we can hear a bit of it if we want to. And we can utilize the third aux here to just boost the sound a bit more. It's a very visceral kind of feeling. Another thing you can do with feedback is beefing up a sound. So we have our synth sound, it's not that impressive, it's not too fat, but now let's feed these two channels back into themselves. We can use LFOs here to increase the level here. And go totally nuts if we want to. And now I want to feed these tracks into these two, or these two channels into these two channels. Why not send some radio through the mixer? <laughs> I mean, why not? I just need to hook up the aux send. So I recorded a bit of radio into the OP1 here. I'm just gonna loop it. We can see where we can take it. And you can play with the distortion using these levels here. going on here. <laughs> okay, let's go! Whoa! <laughs> nice. So let's talk about no input mixing. It basically means that you create sounds with the mixer as an instrument. You're basically feeding its signal back into itself and because it's noisy and you might have an EQ or even effects going on, it can create this really cool and interesting noisy landscape or weird synth sounds. We turn on and we can get a tone and we can use the EQ here to sculpt the sound. So basically the level of the sound is controlling the pitch here and the same goes for the EQ. And we can, of course, take an LFO here, for example, out and impact, impact the level here, giving us a vibrato. So you can think of this as having four oscillators here. And we're introduced the second one here. We're going to take the envelope follower number one here into level. So with the modulations available, it's quite easy to create these rhythmic 
dirty, experimental noises that makes for great sample fodder, especially for harder kinds of electronic music. Listen, if this sort of music making or sound generation isn't for you, don't worry, it wasn't for me either. It's just another way of creating sounds and interesting soundscapes, and I found it very rewarding and interesting, but it might not be for everyone. And by just changing what each channel is sending to the sense, we are impacting the entire feedback loop in a wild way. Let's patch in envelope follower number two. I mean, it's it's crazy. Um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it, you can get some real cool stuff out of it. That's for sure. Now I do have a bit more to share about the synth here, but first a quick word from today's sponsor, DistroKid. Here's 5 reasons to try out DistroKid. Firstly, you sign up for about $20 a year and you can upload unlimited amounts of music. Secondly, it's really quick and easy to upload, basically anyone can do it without any prior knowledge. Three, there are different tiers of subscriptions, so if you want to release your music under say different artist names or if you're starting a label, DistroKid has an option for you. Four, DistroKid lets you upload to relevant stores and streaming services such as Spotify and iTunes and it doesn't take long for the music to be available in the stores. Five, there's also the hyperfollow feature which automatically creates a custom page where people can find out where to buy or listen to your music and I personally really like this feature. So go and check out DistroKid using my link in the description, you get a little discount and you support the channel. So here are some final thoughts. Now, first up, the mod mix is not a cheap mixer, but it's not expensive either if you compare it to similar kinds of performance mixers. If we look at, for example, more premium DJ mixers, they easily go for around 1500 euros, and that's coming from larger companies. Fine Gear is a really small indie manufacturer, and I, for one, am really happy that there are these manufacturers out there that just make the product that they want to use themselves, that they want to see on the market, you know, stuff that isn't already out, and they just go and do it. And of course, that will come with a slightly higher price tag because they're not manufacturing tens of thousands of units like a big brand can. So that's something that I really want to support. And I also want to highlight that while it might seem expensive for four channels, which it is if you only look at it as a four channel mixer, I think it's a reasonably priced performance mixer compared to a lot of the competition out there. The mod mix is, however, not without problems, and it also feels a bit like a first-gen product where there are small things that they could tweak to make it even better. Firstly, I mentioned that the USB cutout on the mixer itself, we take a look here at the back, you can see the USB cutout here, it's not pretty, and I actually talked to Fangear about it, and they're doing something about it, because originally I think that they were aiming for a type B USB socket, so the cutout is larger, and now that you use a smaller one, um, yeah, they're gonna make the cutout smaller in future iterations of this mixer. I'm also not a fan of how some of the knobs scrape against the metal surface. Let's see if you can hear it. 
Feingear is also addressing this. They've told me in email correspondence that they are making some sort of, I don't know, some riser or something to, to get the knob to actually sit a little higher from the metal plate, uh, the, the chassis. Um, I'm not sure, I'm not that technical, but it seems like they can solve it and it seems like I can even add it to my mixer. So yeah, that's good because those small things add up and I think that when you're paying this kind of money, it, it got to be almost perfect, you know? You, you want a really good physical experience, that's for sure. I also want to talk a bit about noise. So this isn't the mixer for you who want like a clinically clean sound. It is a bit noisy. It's a very powerful mixer. There's a lot of gain on the channels, on the headphones preamp and, and so on. So there's a lot of power there, uh, but the noise floor is a little bit higher than I would have liked. I'm not an expert on measuring these things. And it, it can also be a variance between different units, but especially the headphones preamp seems quite noisy to me. And I do feel that when I'm setting levels, I have to be a bit careful not to introduce noise into the mix. Then again, this is a very distortion focused mixer. So I don't foresee it to be a huge problem for most people who this is targeted at. And I also mentioned earlier that there's no DIN MIDI, a DIN MIDI input for syncing the LFOs uh, would have been great, much better than the USB. Now, I think that the reason why they have a USB is because of firmware updates, so they just use that and double as MIDI sync, but a DIN MIDI port for our like Rev2 version would make a ton of sense. But all of that being said, I am actually very happy with the ModMix. I think that it's a great performance mixer. I think it's very interesting, especially if you see yourself using the feedback mechanisms or no input mixing. I even told my buddy Oscillator Sync before I started testing the ModMix that I didn't think that no input mixing was for me. But once I got going with it, I just had a ton of fun. And I don't really know why. I think it's the, the visceral experience. I think it's the lack of rules, uh, the letting go of control, the creative chaos that you <laughs> go into when you're using mo no input mixing and feedback mixing. And it was just a ton of fun. And I'm just glad that I explored this mixer and I really want to support Fine Gear. I think a lot of us really like the idea of having these small companies making the products that they themselves want to use. And this is a unique mixer. And in the world of mixers, where almost all mixers feel the same, sometimes you can't even tell them apart, um, this is a unique thing and I'm here for it. So thank you so much for watching today's video. Hope to see you in the next video.